remember having a conversation with my partner and being like, I don't want to be in a home at 50. I don't want to do that to my family. I just remember falling over and then I had two seizures on the side of the pitch. I remember like waking up months later just in tears because my ears were still ringing, my headaches were still there. And it was just a classic of, I didn't know when I was going to feel better. Freya Holdaway's life has been blighted by concussion. The former Northern Ireland defender was forced to retire last year at the age of just 31 after three separate concussions in the space of 18 months. An enforced break from the game due to COVID-19 cemented her decision because the rest from football improved her condition so much. I feel so much better. I haven't headed a ball in so long. I haven't done any like headed in training anything like that and then I was just like you know what it's time I can't go back to feeling the way that I did um, after feeling so much better in myself not knowing how long it's going to take me to feel better again yeah it was tough I mean I started looking into you know what the long-term effects of concussion are and you know there is stuff out there that can be quite scary and I was like you know what I've had an amazing journey why am I then going to forfeit my future it was it was really hard uh, there were lots of tears involved um, but it's, it's the right thing for me and, you know, my family moving forward. The scientific evidence is minimal but significant. Research from the University of Pennsylvania found that women and girls are at twice the risk of concussion from playing sport as men. Add to that the fact that footballers are 3.5 times more likely to suffer from dementia and in the UK women make up 65% of all dementia cases and the outlook for female footballers is stark. Dr Michael Gray from the University of East Anglia, who is running the SCORES project, studying the impact of neurodegeneration on professional footballers, one of the few research projects to include women, says there urgently needs to be much more work in this field. Women have been overlooked. We need to have more studies specifically in women. And if we think about the mechanics of an actual concussion, when the skull hits an object, the brain is wobbling inside that skull. The only thing that stops it is, is neck, um, neck musculature. Women have less next month musculature than do men. Therefore, there's more damage. Hormonally, women are less protected because of their hormonal cycles. If we, women are experiencing concussion to a greater extent, there must be more damage in the female brain. That damage accumulates over time, just as it does in the male brain. But what we need to understand is, is does this occur earlier with women? Does it occur to a greater extent with, with women? Or is it just that the numbers of women who, who experience dementia are greater than, than men? Football has been accused of being behind the curve generally when it comes to brain injuries in the sport, with limits to heading in training only being introduced this year, despite years of campaigning and evidence linking it to degenerative brain injury. And at the elite level, matchday medical support available for female pros is dwarfed by that available to men. Women's football, both at a professional and grassroots level, remains firmly in the shadow of the men's game. And despite the growing scientific evidence, there are no separate rules or protocols when it comes to concussion in female football. And some amateurs here are not even aware of the increased risks they face. I'm not surprised that all the research is like, geared towards men, because obviously football predominantly, especially in Britain, is more of a male sport and women are hopefully getting into it more. But I didn't realise that women were more likely to suffer concussions. I feel like I'm on the back end of a concussion for four days now after headering the ball too many times on Saturday. And it does kind of scare you because, like you said, there's not much research, so you automatically start believing that the worst is happening. Concussion substitute pilots will be implemented in the women's top two tiers this season. And the Football Association says its medical team is working to build a greater understanding and an accurate picture of the medical demands in the women's and girls' game. But this will take time, and Freya Holdaway fears that in the meantime, there will be many more female players like her facing an uncertain future.